listen to my words, O Lord. Know the whispered things I say. Heed my crying out for help, God, my King, to you I pray. Welcome to the Bible Study Pal podcast. My name is Greg Circle, the preacher for the Church of Christ that meets in Palmyra, Indiana. This year we are going through the Psalms. The goal of the podcast is to read the Psalms and talk about the words and the ideas that we find in them to prepare for the Bible studies and sermons that will be presented during our regular meeting times. Sunday at 9.15 a.m. for Bible classes for all ages, 10 a.m. for our morning worship, 5 p.m. for our evening worship, and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. for our midweek Bible classes again for all ages. The Bible classes and sermons will come from the New Testament connections to the Psalms that we read and study in this podcast. I will mention the connections I see, but you are invited to comment below if you are watching slash listening on a platform that allows that, or email preacher at palmyrachurchofchrist.org with your own comments, questions, observations, and connections that you make. The readings of complete psalms will come from the Berean Standard Bible, which is a modern translation in the public domain. Unless otherwise noted, individual scripture quotations taken from the LSB. Legacy Standard Bible, copyright 2021 by the Lockman Foundation, used by permission, all rights reserved. Let's get into the study. For our Sunday morning AM Bible study, we'll be looking at the New Testament connections we see to Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved my distress. Show me grace and hear my prayer. How long, O men, will my honor be maligned? How long will you love vanity and seek after lies? Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry, yet do not sin. On your bed, search your heart and be still. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many ask, who can show us the good? Shine the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have filled my heart with more joy than when grain and new wine abound. I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. One thing special about the three psalms that we'll be looking at today is that they are all psalms of lamentation. There's a lot of these. Perhaps one-third of the psalms can be classified as lamentations. As Psalm 1 and 2 seem to go together, wisdom for individuals and wisdom for national leaders, at least in part, Psalm 3 and 4 also seem to go together. Psalm 3 is a prayer upon waking, and Psalm 4 a prayer for bedtime. Give answer when I call, O God, you are my righteousness. To me be gracious, hear my prayer, you freed me in distress, you freed me in distress. Verse 1 seems to be an outline for the psalm. Verses 2 and 3, point A, God answers prayers. Verses 4 and 5, point B, God is our righteousness. And verses 6 through 8, point C, God shows grace. The situation that the psalmist is lamenting is that he is distressed, but he trusts God will relieve him. Here again, the lament includes a protest of his innocence. Why should he be treated this way? Why is he distressed? How long will you, O sons of men, my glory turn to shame? How long will you love vanity and make deceit your aim and make deceit your aim? The Lord will hear me when I call, know this with certainty. The Lord has claimed the godly one, his very own to be, his very own to be. 
As we look at verses 2 and 3, we find that he's distressed because his honor is maligned, and people are finding anything they can to condemn him, even if it is by bearing false witness. So he warns his detractors that God listens for the godly and will answer their prayers. This is his claim to innocence, that he is godly, and so God will answer his prayer. But how can we define who or what is godly? When you are by your anger stirred, be careful not to sin. Instead, be silent on your bed and meditate within, and meditate within. Present a righteous sacrifice and make the Lord your trust. Keep in mind that this is a prayer as the psalmist is lying down to sleep, but it is full of advice for all of God's people. Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Remember that the psalmist is calling out to the God of my righteousness. We have to take our cues for righteousness from God himself. We cannot be self-righteous. And there's something else here. Who can make things right? God instructs us how to make things right when we can, but when the ball is not in our court, we have to remember that vengeance belongs to him. Have you ever heard the saying, let go and let God? Sacrifice your troubles to God. Trust him to take care of them. Since many say who shows us good, your face, Lord, shine on us. Your face, Lord, shine on us. You fill my heart with joy beyond when wine and grain increase. Since you alone, Lord, keep me safe, I'll go to sleep in peace. I'll go to sleep in peace. And finally, in verses 6 through 8, we can think about what the psalmist says by asking, Who can show us the good? Who can show us grace? Only Yahweh can, and how gracious he is. He makes the sun rise and the rain fall on the just and the unjust, the righteous and the unrighteous, the good and the evil. But more than that, he gives us every spiritual blessing, including the peace to sleep at night. When you are by your anger stirred, be careful not to sin. For our Bible study, we will probably be looking at Ephesians chapter 4 because of the direct quote in Ephesians 4 verse 26 of Psalm 4 and verse 4. Let's look and see why Paul uses this psalm in his context. Within, present a righteous sacrifice and make the Lord your trust. Since many say who shows us good, your face, Lord, shine on us. Your face, Lord, shine on us. For the Sunday morning sermon for week two, we will be looking at the New Testament connections to Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Attend to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. At daybreak I lay my plea before you and wait in expectation. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. No evil can dwell with you. The boastful cannot stand in your presence. You hate all workers of iniquity. You destroy those who tell lies. The Lord abhors the man of bloodshed and deceit. But I will enter your house by the abundance of your loving devotion. In reverence I will bow down toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make straight your way before me, for not a word they speak can be trusted. Destruction lies within them. Their throats are open graves, their tongues practice deceit. Declare them guilty, O God. 
Let them fall by their own devices. Drive them out for their many transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. May you shelter them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely you, O Lord, bless the righteous. You surround them with the shield of your favor. Listen to my words, O Lord. Know the whispered things I say. Heed my crying out for help. God, my King, to you I pray. Hear me in the morning, Lord, when I lift my voice on high, setting forth my plea to you, looking out with watchful eyes. Again, Psalm 5 is a lament psalm. And in verses 1 through 3, the reason for this psalm is introduced. The psalmist groans to Yahweh and cries out to him. And again, there is recognition that he is faithful to hear and respond to the pleas of the righteous. We have this assertion of innocence. For I know that you, O God, find in evil no delight. Cannot dwell with you, nor the proud stand in your sight. You hate all who practice sin, you destroy the one who lies. For the Lord abominates those schemes of blood divide. In verses 4 through 6, we read about how the psalmist knows that God will listen because God cannot stand wickedness and evil, nor can the evil stand in the presence of God. Note how lies is parallel to bloodshed here. Sure, a little white lie may not cause someone to die, but people bearing false witness have time and time again brought destruction on individuals and nations alike. To bring the thought of this psalm a little closer to us, we may often point out that the wicked will not be in heaven because God cannot abide sin in his presence. But we ought to keep in mind that God is present everywhere, and he will not allow it to continue even here on earth. He will eventually take his revenge. God will point out evil in some way and correct it. The sins of some men are quite evident, going before them to judgment. For others, their sins follow after. 1 Timothy 5, verse 24. We might also look at verse 6 and point out that David was, quote, a man of war who had shed blood, unquote, 1 Chronicles 28, verse 3. He was responsible for the death of Uriah, 2 Samuel 11, verses 14 and 15, and he had practiced deceit on a couple of occasions. A good example of these two sins happening together is found in 1 Samuel chapter 27, verses 8 through 12, where he lied about who he attacked. He said that he was attacking the Israelites, his own people, but instead he was attacking the Philistines, the people who were currently offering him protection. Yet in your abounding love to your house will I draw near, bowing to your holy place, worshiping in reverent fear. Since, O Lord, my enemies all around me lie in wait, lead me in your righteousness, make your way before me straight. The psalmist is aware of his sin, and yet God is merciful and allows him to enter the Lord's house and fearfully worship in his temple. The psalmist is still looking, actively searching for Yahweh's righteous way, and he prays that it will be clearly marked out before him. In their mouth there is no truth, all their heart destruction seeks, like an Throat while their tongue with honey speaks. 
speaks. Make them bear their guilt, O God, snare them in the things they planned. Cast them out for all their sins, rebels who against you stand. But the wicked do not seek the way of God. Instead, they are on the way that seems right to them. It is a path of unapologetic lies and flattery. They don't understand that the end of their path is destruction. Proverbs 14.12 and 16.25. Destruction for themselves and for the ones to whom they speak. The psalmist prays for his rebellious enemies to be declared guilty and receive the natural consequences of their lies and transgressions. Yet let all who trust in you sing for joy through all their days. Guard all those who love your name. Let them give you joyful praise. Blessing to the righteous one you surely break with your favor like a shield you will give him covering but instead of fighting against god the psalmist wants to encourage people to take flight to him those who trust in the righteousness of God, can sing for joy, praising God instead of flattering men. The righteous are covered while out in the open, instead of trying to hide in the shadows so no one can see their shameful flaws. God's favor is certainly a large shield for the righteous. In their mouth there is no truth. All their heart destruction seeks. Like an open grave their throat while their tongue with honey speaks. As for the New Testament connections to this psalm, verse 9, lines 3 and 4 are directly quoted in Romans chapter 3 and verse 13. So the Sunday morning sermon will come from this chapter of Romans. Cast them out for all their sins, rebels who against you stand. For the Sunday evening sermon for week two, we'll see the New Testament connections to Psalm 6. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am frail. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is deeply distressed. How long, O Lord? How long? Turn, O Lord, and deliver my soul. Save me because of your loving devotion, for there is no mention of you in death. Who can praise you from Sheol? I am weary from groaning. All night I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes fail from grief. They grow dim because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be ashamed and dismayed. They will turn back in sudden disgrace. Psalms 5 and 6 seem to be another morning-evening pair. Psalm 5 verse 3 talks about the morning, and Psalm 6 verse 6 speaks of every night. Many have thought about this psalm from the perspective of someone so depressed and sick of himself because of his sin. If this is the case, we have a lament psalm in which we have the confession of sin motif rather than the assertion of innocence as we have seen in the previous few psalms. But I think I want to take a little bit different approach. One thing that I don't particularly see in this psalm is a confession of a personal sin. I would classify this as a psalm of trust or confidence, a subset of the Lamentation Psalms. Be gracious, Lord, rebuke me not in wrath, nor in your anger, for I waste away. Will you delay? 
We see God's reaction to sin, that is, His wrath. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. Romans 1, 18 and 19. But where do we see it's the psalmist's unrighteousness in view? Perhaps what we see is more of a reaction to the sin around him, the sin of his people. And he knows that God has promised the nation that they would be disciplined for turning away from the God who brought them out of Egypt and through the wilderness. But it will be if you do not listen to the voice of Yahweh your God to keep and to do all his commandments and his statutes with which I am commanding you today that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground, the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. Cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. Yahweh will send upon you the curse, confusion, and rebuke in all that you send forth your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds, because you have forsaken me, because you did not serve Yahweh your God with gladness and a merry heart, because of the abundance of all things. Therefore you shall serve your enemies whom Yahweh will send against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in the lack of all things. And he will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. Deuteronomy chapter 28 Verses 15 through 20 and 47 and 48. How long? The psalmist asks. O Lord, return to liberate my soul. And for your steadfast love come now to save. For no one will remember you in death. How long for what? How long until the Lord saves them? How long will this punishment last? How long until they can freely worship Yahweh again? These verses of the psalm remind me of Moses' intercession for the idolatrous Israelites in Exodus 32 verses 9 through 14 or Numbers 14 11 through 17 or Joshua's lament over the defeat at Ai, Joshua 7 verses 8 and 9. They, like Abraham, believed God. Now he was threatening to upend his whole plan because of the sins of the nation. Remember, God had promised David that through his descendant, there would be a kingdom that would never be destroyed. The psalmist reminds us of the lesson God taught these great men of faith, that God will be considered holy by his people. I have grown weary with my sighs and moans. I cry and flood my bed with tears each night. Due to my grief and all my enemies, my weeping eyes grow weak and lose their sight. Let's briefly turn back to Deuteronomy 28, verses 65 through 67, and take note of the parallels to what the psalmist sings in Psalm 6, 4 through 7, this and the previous section. Moreover, among those nations you shall find no relief, and there will be no resting place for the sole of your foot. But there Yahweh will give you a trembling heart, failing of eyes, and despair of soul. So your life shall hang in doubt before you, and you will be in dread night and day, and shall not have any faith in your life. In the morning you shall say, Would that it were evening. And at evening you shall say, Would that it were morning, because of the dread of your heart which you dread and because of the sight of your eyes, which you will see. The weariness comes from the groaning of a trembling heart. There is no rest for the wicked, and apparently for the righteous who have to deal with them. The failing eyes are because of all the shed tears. Why are tears shed? Because of all my foes, the psalmist sings. What should be our response to all these foes, even if they are people of our own people, nation, tribe, and tongue? The Lord has heard the heard my cries. All evildoers go depart from me. The Lord receives each prayer I make to Him. Troubled and 
and shamed my foes leave suddenly. Here's where the light comes from this dark psalm. God answers the prayers of the righteous, those who set themselves apart from the iniquitous. How does he answer the prayer of how long? By shaming the adversaries with the good behavior of the righteous. There is a responsibility on our part. We have to separate ourselves from the ungodly. 2 Corinthians 6.17 And again, we have a recognition that God hears the prayers of the righteous and not the unrighteous. 1 Peter 3.12 More on this when we get to Psalm 34. The shame of the wicked will come. It may seem to be delayed too long, but it will come. 1 Peter 3.13-16 My bones, my soul are troubled. Heal me, Lord. How long, O Lord, how long will you connections that I notice in the New Testament, back to this psalm, begin with what I see as a reference to verse 3 in Revelation 6, 9, and 10, when the martyrs are asking how long until the Lord will take vengeance on the people who caused their death. And then I think we see Jesus referencing this psalm, specifically verse 8, in his depiction of the judgment in Matthew 7, particularly in verse 23, when he quotes this psalm saying, Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. Or, I guess in our translation, it's depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And again, there is a theme in the New Testament, particularly in 1 Peter 3, verse 16, we saw earlier, of the shame of the adversaries by the good behavior of God's people. So I think what we might do in the evening sermon for this week is to discuss the connection of these passages to each other and how the psalm links them. Lose their sight. The Lord has heard, the Lord has heard my cries. All evil doers go depart from me. The Lord receives each prayer I make to Him. Troubled and shamed, my foes leave suddenly. Yet in your abounding love to your house will I draw near. Being in reverent fear, since, O oh Lord, my enemies all around me lie in wait, lead me in your righteousness, make your way before me straight. Thank you for listening to the Bible Study Pal podcast, a ministry of the Church of Christ that meets in Palmyra, Indiana. We'd love to see you visit at 14175 Green Street Northeast, just south of the intersection of U.S. Route 150 and Indiana Route 135. We begin our worship at 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. each Sunday, and we have Bible classes for all ages Sunday morning at 9.15 and Wednesday evening at 6.30. You can watch the live stream of our Sunday morning worship at youtube.com slash at Bible Study Pal. If you would like to contact us, you can email preacher at palmyrachurchofchrist.org or give us a phone call, 812-364-6215. You can keep up with our special events and community announcements on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash palmyra.churchofchrist. Yet let all who trust in you sing for joy through all their days. Guard all those who love your name, let them give you joyful praise. Blessing to the righteous one you, O Lord, will surely bring. With your favor like a shield, you will give him covering. 
Thank you for listening.